So let's go on to the AWRL website, awrl.org forward slash RF dash exposure. And you will see that how they have the introduction about amateur radio as a safe activity and all this other stuff. Lots of link to articles and such like that from QST and resources, web links, including this FAQ, which you can take a look at up in the description below. The latest thing is this RF exposure calculator that we're going to look at. Okay. So the nice thing about this is that it's based on the Lake Washington Ham Club, one that I linked in the last video, but it has a lot of resources, including detailed instructions. It has a lot of help and it has a lot of sources and it also allows you to sign up for a mailing list and um, in addition to all the calculations you can then print it and keep it. So let's go through a, a sample calculation here. Power at the antenna. Let us say now the power at the antenna if you, if you click on need help with this it will tell you um, it'll go down here where are you seeing that? You see the calculated parameters antenna gain power at the antenna so this is the radiated power in watts at the antenna so for well I don't think it should be radiated but it should be the input power at the antenna you shouldn't account for feed line loss poor SWR etc so something like um, where you have the like let's say you have they talk about 100 watts into 80 feet of RG8X coax with an SWR of 1.4 to 1 will result only 46 watts of actual power and they give you a link to a calculator which I showed you how to use in another video which I will also link below and then you can um, deal with that. They also explain the mode duty cycle this is for another part of the calculator and you have your different modes. I noticed they did not include FT8 but for FTA, for all intents and purposes, you can use conversational SSB with heavy speech processing, which gives you a 50% duty cycle. Or to be extremely conservative, you can use FSK or RTTY, which uses a 100% duty cycle. You have also, um, you know, other th modes, CW, right? And then you'll talk about the antenna gain. They tell you that you can you can look at the detailed antenna model that you have. Maybe you calculate it using one of the NEC um, programs, or you have an antenna model from the manufacturer. Like for example, all these antenna manufacturers in will include a lot of documentation with their antennas. And here you have a set of common types of antennas, and they list a lot of them from a dipole, dishes, Yagi's, um, collinear. Delta, I believe this is a delta loop. You have a like a four square G5RV, the horn. We don't mean a car horn, we mean the horn like a, a microwave feed horn. And you have um, Z, uh, ZX6BKW G5RV. And for some reason, the G5RV is listed as 1 dBi. So, an important thing to note is that these calculations are in dBi and they're not. DBM, um, sorry, they're not DBD for dipoles, so they are actually uh, with reference to a point source and not with reference to a reference dipole. Okay. Right, so now that we have that out of the way, so let's do the power at the antenna. Let's say we are going to be using a, let's make it simple, 100 watts from your transmitter, and then you do 3 dBs of loss. And your feed line in SWR. So we do in 3 dB will be about 50, 50 um, watts out of 100. So it's, and then we're doing the conversational SSB 20% or heavy speech processing, right? And then you have the transmit duty cycle. You can do the five minutes on and 10 minutes off, or you can do 30 minutes on and then. 30 minutes off, but I think you do for you do five minutes on and off, five minutes on and then 10 minutes off. Antenna gain, 
um, in DBI, let's say we're using a dipole, 2.15, an operating frequency. Let's go to the top of the 10 meter band, 29.7. You can include the effects of ground reflections, or you can omit it. Okay, so I'm going to omit it. Then you hit calculate. And then it will give you the maximum allowed power density here in milliwatts per square centimeter. It gives it a minimum safe distance in feet, right? Because in the USA we use feet for some reason. And a minimum safe distance in meters, which is 0.3265. For that's for a controlled environment. So remember we talk about controlled and uncontrolled environment. A controlled environment is where you have control over the RF exposure, like for example, a ham radio operator in their own home. And the uncontrolled environment would be where you don't have control over the, and you don't know the risks and the exposure, which would be like, for example, bystanders, your neighbors, or other people. So an uncontrolled environment, you know, is generally the more stricter, tighter standard. And here you have 0.2041 for the maximum allowed power density, 0 0.2041. Minimum safe distance, you notice it's a little further out, 1.51. And then the minimum distance, safe distance in meters is 0 0.4618. Let's go talk about, um, let's see Lake Washington Ham Club and see if they do the same one. Okay. So the Lake Washington Ham Club we do, we do the same 50 watts, conversational SSB, the antenna gain 2.15, operating frequency 29.7, and then you calculate, and then you will get 1.0203, and then you can do, you know, you get the same results essentially. So that's really all there is to it. And um, there are a lot of, um, you know, the AWRL web page is basically the same as this, but it has a lot of instructions and has the ability to save. You know, you can print the results and then you save it as a PDF and you keep it with your station documentation, or you can print it out on a hard copy. So, and that's all there is to it. Thank you. And this is N2RJ. Keep on hamming.